I often wonder how people established their credibility before the digital media or social media existed. How did they build trust and win over? Well, I started my journey as a passionate theatre artist and everything was going all fine, but life had different plans for me. So after a few years, I restarted my journey as a creativity coach, wherein I conducted workshops on creative problem solving and communication management. So in order to pitch my projects, I remember visiting schools and colleges with a portfolio, bio or a brochure in my hand and explaining them of what I do and how I do it. Now trust me when I say this, I had the talent, I had the experience, I even had the direct references if that's what you're wondering. But even after all of these things, I was given this weird look. Like their eyes asking me a question. Um, like, who the hell are you, Kanika? And why the hell should I invest my time and money on you? Obviously, they didn't say that. But uh, they were polite enough to give me the universal answer. Any guesses? Yes, we will let you know. Now, because of all of these rejections, I got so frustrated that I decided to take the matter into my own hands. I decided that I'll directly sell my courses to my right audience. I told myself, Karika, why do I have to wait for a school or a college to approve my project first in order to get in touch with my right audience? Fair enough. So, I started making plans and activities to sell my courses. Funnily enough, I only had one plan. Please do not laugh when I tell you about my plan. So my plan was to create ads on Facebook and on Instagram to get in touch with my right audience. That's it. That was my only plan. Nothing else. Oh wait, I also had a backup plan. So I decided to create a LinkedIn account to get in touch with the HR and get some direct references. Little did I know that Nobody would entertain you until and unless you have an identity or power. Nobody would listen to you until and unless you have a voice or projection. Nobody would believe in you until and unless you have something that is visible, accessible and approachable at the same time. And therefore, LinkedIn had me asking this question. Amazing question. Listen to this. The question was, who am I? But the subtext that I derived from this question was, why would LinkedIn define me? Now, I was one of those who were told to create LinkedIn accounts. So my friend suggested, can I create a LinkedIn account? Like, okay, yeah, I'll create a LinkedIn account. Now, when I created my account, I met this amazing personality, Mr. A. Now, let's see what Mr. A does. Mr. A creates a LinkedIn account. Mr. A wakes up at 8 a.m. in the morning. Mr. A uses Instagram all day. Mr. A watches Reels all day. Mr. A blames a recruiter for not calling them back. Mr. A complains that life has been so unfair. Now, how Mr. A became my idol? I created a LinkedIn account for namesake. I reached out to one HR in three months and never followed back and I watched food videos all days. Now, why did I never follow back? Having been part of the entertainment industry for so long, I kind of developed this attitude for dealing with rejection, call it my escape route, that it's their loss if they're not reaching out to me, it's their loss if they're not calling me back. Because I failed to understand that any job in any industry is Requirement driven. So anyway, sooner or later I realized that Mr. A here is my fake influenza. And therefore I started following Mr. B. Now let's see what Mr. B does. Mr. B has definitely one LinkedIn account. Mr. B gets up at 8 a.m. in the morning. Mr. B applies to 100 jobs every day. Mr. B reaches out to recruiter in order to get a job. Could Mr. B blames the recruiter for not calling them back. Mr. B complains that life has been so unfair. Now, how Mr. B became my idol? I already have a LinkedIn account. 
I sent 100 connection requests to random people on a daily basis. I messaged random people asking for work, asking for opportunity, asking for, you know, to uh, approve my project, asking for references. And obviously I got a reply, the universal reply, we will let you know. And obviously we all know the literal meaning behind we will let you know. Again, I realized Mr. B here is my fool influenza. But anyway, I followed this process for almost 11 months on LinkedIn till the moment that I finally found myself. Now it's kind of a vague statement to say that I finally found myself in just a span of 11 months because it kind of gives an impression that it was not, it was an overnight success. But the reality is, while I was failing all of those years by getting rejected by companies, by being body shamed by the entertainment industry, by unable to complete my CA, which by the way was not my choice in the first place, to dealing with cancer, cherry on the top, and being sick for years and years, I worked on myself. I really, really worked on myself. I read books, I made random videos, I worked for free for years only to see that if I'm able to implement things or not. And I hit and tried everything till the moment that I can finally say that yes, I found myself. So the growth rate of my profile could have been more than 125% on an average basis since the day I started posting but it was never a sudden success. But the question is, what did I do after finding myself? Because of the turbulence of ups and downs that I've seen through my journey, I found my cusp. Now if you go by the literal meaning, cusp means a point of transition between two different states. And my point of transition was, C plus USP. C being consistency and USP being unique selling point. So I defined my unique selling point and posted it consistently. My first post on LinkedIn was on 10th of October, which is World's Mental Health Day. Having been through all of this, I have always been vocal about my mental health. Therefore, I wanted to curate a topic I wanted to create a topic which was relevant for the LinkedIn members, LinkedIn audience. So I posted or I talked about mental harassment in the workplace. Because let's be honest, nobody really talks about it. This is how I defined my unique point and sold it on LinkedIn. Do not say literally, but yeah. Similarly, I was again a silent user on LinkedIn for almost 11 months and therefore one of the things that I observed was a lot of fake recruiters or fake recruitment agencies were fooling or scamming job seekers. So I started this concept of wall of shame on my page wherein I would expose all of those accounts who were trying to fool my job seekers and this is how I managed to get under that 1% 1 1% percent. 1 percent of 740 million users who create content on LinkedIn on a regular basis. Now when I say relevant content by that I mean you providing value you adding value through your content by defining your difference and your cusp. Now, I literally have a blah profile, very blah profile. I haven't specified my skill sets. I haven't specified my experience. I haven't specified my accomplishments. All I have is my name and my education. Having said that, I have not really been part of the corporate world as well. I mean, of course, yes, I conduct corporate workshops, but not really in in. Irrespective of the fact ignoring all of these facts 
I still managed to gain almost four to five job offers every week in just five months of posting. 75,000 followers in just six months. Created 10 million impressions through my content in just five months. The people who ignored me in the beginning came to me asking for jobs, job opportunities. The friends who stopped talking to me, abandoned me, came to me to promote their products and services, asking me to promote their products and services on my page. And not just that, Big Four and other big brands who come to me for a single like or a comment on their post for hiring purposes. Me, to a CA dropout. So the point is if I can, you can too. Just find your cusp. Now as a job search strategist, I would suggest, say for example, if there are 40 million people on LinkedIn searching for jobs every week, what difference you can provide? And that answer is personal branding. We need to understand that personal branding is important for everyone, including a job seeker. Even if you're a student, do it. If you're a fresher, do it. Experienced, working professional, executive, freelancer, anyone, just do it. Personal branding and combine with your USP. And my friend, your USP is nothing but your skill. Your USP is your skill. Now you may wonder, Kanika, are you saying my unique selling point is my skill? And then again, you're saying that there are 40 million people already searching. Of course, my skill is going to clash with somebody else. Yes, definitely. But you have to realize that you might have a similar set of skill. But how you present them and how you show it to the world can always be unique it can always be different every how what why when the answer is you my friend you and your different your cusp tried and worked now coming back to the first question who am i <sighs> linden gave me an opportunity to add value through my emotions through my journey that I wanted to add every day. I valued value. My aim, my purpose was never to become a big shot personality or an influencer. I just had a simple emotion. My simple emotion for a job seeker to protect any job seeker from who were getting trapped under the scams or frauds. That simple emotion. And my USP flowed with that emotion. Do not post just for the sake of meeting an endpoint. While I was doing CA, I wanted to have an endpoint. I wanted to join a big four and earn decently. While I was doing theater, I wanted to have an endpoint. I wanted to become a vamp of a lifetime. That's true. But for the first time in my life with this platform, I had no idea where I was headed. And I quite enjoy it. Undoubtedly, I'm still figuring it out. But there's a difference between building yourself and becoming a slave for someone else. You need to define your emotion with your USP. Your struggles, your past, they will lead you to a journey where you'll be able to find your value. Post for a value, not for a price. Remind yourself that again and again. I connected the dots looking backwards. You cannot connect the dots looking forward. Steve Jobs said that, right? And this is how I made my journey by connecting the dots looking backwards and my, made my journey, made my way through it. In the dry and forgotten digital world of this platform i made my way into finding myself and as of today as of now i have managed to gain one lakh followers in the past few months created 20 million impressions through my content 
shared more than 25,000 job opportunities in the past few months, referred more than 8,000 job seekers in their dream companies, and engaged with more than 6 million job seekers. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Kanika Kusreisht, and this has been my journey into finding myself. Thank you very much.